Hey folks, Randy here with Doing Cut and Trim. So, when I uh, first joined the UAG, uh, uh, they uh, I had a conversation with them, and uh, they gave they we were talking about some things that I could discuss on this channel, and um, I threw out some ideas. And uh, towards the end, um, they said, you know, you you run your business in a different kind of way. Uh, where you kind of focus more on online interactions as opposed to in-person interactions and we'd like you to talk about that so i said great and so i started working on the outline for that and you know taking down some notes and um, i was struggling with the explanation for what i do because what i do is 99 percent of the interactions i have with my customers are done online um, i've been mowing since 2015 um, I have several customers that uh, I've worked with since 2016 that I've never met. Um, I have many customers, literally, I don't even know the sound of their voice. Every interaction I've had with them has been through email. And so I was, they, they wanted me to talk about the pros and cons of that, what the benefits of that were. And um, as I was working on that, I was thinking about it. and. Uh, jotting down notes and I was trying to ex I was trying to think of the best way to explain it um, and I was struggling really struggling with it and I realized it's because I wasn't being honest about why uh, I, I set up my business in that way where most of my interactions were happening online the truth is the God's honest truth is the reason I did most of my interacting with customers online and the reason I did most of my lead follow-up online um, was because I wasn't confident enough in myself. That, that's the biggest reason for why I did things the way I did when I first started my business. And honestly, it still kind of carries over now. But uh, it, it, really, it really started with an interaction I had with a customer very early on. Um, there was a mulch job that uh, I got contacted to do a quote for. And I drove into this neighborhood, beautiful, beautiful neighborhood, and uh, knocked on the guy's door. He came out, and the first thing he did was look at my 1998 Dodge Dakota and said, is that your work truck? And I said, uh, yes, sir, it is. And he's like, hmm. And he let me do the quote, but you could tell he wasn't even listening to me talk. He was just let me do my thing, try and I guess, I don't know, be nice or whatever. And I didn't get the job, but I felt just this stinging like, ah, oh, I don't look the part. I don't feel the part. And so, you know, and I didn't know what to do about that. I wasn't, I don't go into debt in my business. I don't take out any loans. And so I, you know, getting a new truck wasn't an option. Um, and I felt, I, honestly, I felt humiliated that I was starting a business with a Dodge Dakota. I look back on that now, I don't feel that way now. I, I actually feel like that's, I, I feel like that's silly. But at the time, I was, I, I lacked so much confidence in myself uh, that I, I just, I didn't want to face people. But I wasn't gonna let that keep me from running a business and providing for my family. So I, I just looked for a workaround. And basically the workaround I found was just to not speak to people. Um, I also, <laughs> I also felt like uh, uh, when I talked on the phone with customers, I didn't feel like I came across very confident or I felt like I didn't sound like I knew what I was talking about. I hate the sound of my voice, if we're being completely honest. <laughs> and so <clears throat> I, I wanted the interactions to happen online. And so I would promote things that way and certain advertisements, I wouldn't even list our phone number and um, I started looking at the way large companies handle this kind of stuff. Um, like I, I, I literally called Walmart and Target and Home Depot and I listened to what their voice message machine sounded like. And then I wrote up my own kind of thing and I uh, actually hired somebody on Fiverr, a voice actor, to read the script for me. And part of that script was saying that uh, we're currently dealing with a high volume of calls um, however, if you contact us via email or through our website, you'll get bumped to the beginning of the line. And so since I was struggling to answer the phone because I had so little confidence in myself, 
many, many times, I would get a phone call, I would let it go to voicemail, and three minutes later, I would get an email from that same person. And so it, it started that way for me. And, it, and, and, you know, a lack of confidence wasn't the only reason. Um, I, I was also dealing with a situation with my son where he was dealing with a lot of uh, physical issues and there was constantly having to stop and, and address those problems. And I, I didn't want, I wanted to be able to respond to customers, but the easiest way for me to respond to them was through email. You know, when you're in the hospital with your kid, you don't want to walk away to make a phone call, but uh, you know, you can you know, write an email. And so in the beginning of my business, that's, uh, that's how I did it. That's how I interacted with customers. That's how I uh, dealt with um, my own insecurities. And so while I, I want to give this grand, great reason for why I started my business the way I did and, and focused on online interactions versus uh, in-person interactions, um, that just wasn't the reality of what I was doing. Uh, there wasn't a great reason other than I didn't have enough confidence in myself to look the customer in the eye. Now, it's ironic now, I don't have a problem with it at all. It doesn't bother me. Um, but my business is already built geared towards one way and, and actually it's been kind of nice because I've been able to build up customer loyalty with very little customer interaction like actual voice or face to face and so now that uh, the business has grown and I've become more confident in myself um, it's not a big deal for me to talk to a customer but it builds even more loyalty with the customer that because they already had that built up and then I'm using the tools that you're actually supposed to use to build up that loyalty in the first place. Um, so that's honestly that's the truth about why I started things online uh, and focused on that. Um, the way I, obviously I was able to do that is I had a phone service. I set up uh, UMA office and um, used their uh, uh, virtual, what do you call that? Virtual sec, not virtual secretary. Virtual something. I don't know. Like you call him and it says, you know, welcome to Dual and Cut and Trim. And if you don't want to, if you want to get a hold of Randy, press this number. If you want to get a hold of the sales team, press this number. <laughs> like I don't think. <laughs> Actually used a British uh, 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 voice actor, voice actress, um, because I read somewhere that the uh, British accent is the most trusted accent in the world, so I actually used a British uh, uh, voice actress. Um, and uh, you know, used that, used the voicemail saying, please just email us. Um, in the beginning, I used the lead generator that uh, Yardbook has, um, where customers can just type all their information into the lead generator and it shoots, it pop, auto-populates it into Yardbook. I was able to wireframe that into my uh, website. Um, <clears throat> and then when I switched over to Service Autopilot, I was able to do the same thing with the solution that Service Autopilot has. Um, and then, you know, I, I have a very robust online CRM through Service Autopilot where it, um, it basically makes going cut and trim look way bigger than it is. Um, most of the time when customers call me, I'm a solo guy. But uh, many times when I've been called by customers to complain, they've called to complain about the big guy that mows my yard, not realizing they're talking about me to me <laughs> because they assume I'm way larger than I am, um, which has been a benefit for me in certain circumstances. You know, it, it gives the impression of a larger company, um, even when you're smaller, which, you know, mattered way more to me in the beginning. I wanted people to think I was more established and larger than I was. Now, I almost feel the opposite. I, like, I almost want people to know, yeah, I am doing all this by myself. You know? <laughs> but then I don't want it to be weird for folks that have been like, oh, I thought this was like a multi-crew company for the last five years. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's, for folks that are starting out and you're nervous, you don't know what to do, you're scared to talk to people, I 100% understand where you're coming from because that was me all the way, 100%. So I, I really feel where you're coming from with that, man. And uh, you know, don't let that stop you 
from starting your business. Um, you know, don't don't let your because you're weak in one area. Don't don't let that be what keeps you from your dream of running your own thing. You know, look for ways to deal with your weaknesses until you get stronger. You know, it took me a couple of years before I was comfortable talking to a customer, and I still hate the sound of my voice. So, <laughs> so this is Randy with Dual and Cut and Trim. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope it was encouraging to somebody. Um, have a good one.